lovely to see you again. Oh, do sit down. I'll bring over some tea and biscuits momentarily. Have you read the new Lady Whistledown? Apparently, there's a YouTuber by the name of Esther Ongenda who decided that she'd rather spend her time writing and rambling about what is going on in Bridgerton. <laughs> the nerve. Quaint, isn't it? In a whole pandemic? I just don't think there's anything to discuss about <laughs> Bridgerton. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Esther and in this video we will be discussing Bridgerton. What I liked, what I didn't like and what could have been done better. If you live in a cave, Bridgerton is one of the most watched Netflix TV series of all time. It is produced by Shondaland, Shonda Rhimes, who is responsible for hits such as Grey's Anatomy, Scandal and How to Get Away with Murder. The show itself is run by Chris Van Dusen. Disclaimer. I'm going by the assumption that you've already watched the show, so I will be spoiling a few plot lines and a few characters and stuff like that, just to make my point. If you haven't watched the show, it's basically Gossip Girl meets Jane Austen. They come together and make a beautiful modern Regency era Ariana Grande singing Baby. Yes. So what did I like about the show and why was it such a big hit? I think it's a combination of two things. Remember in March 2020 when Tiger King came out? It's a similar thing. We were all stressed, depressed and not well dressed and Tiger King came out and just blew us all out of the water. We just became this, this global community over Tiger King. And the same thing has happened with Bridgerton. I feel like once it was released on Christmas Day, first of all Christmas was, you know, kind of uneventful. <laughs> So it was just nice to have this show come out, this diverse cast, this, you know, whimsical romantic story and everyone just be obsessed. What else did I like? I liked the cinematography, the aesthetics, the Queen's wigs, and of course the classical renditions of pop hits. Thank you, next at the ball. Thank you, next. It was quaint. I think they were well placed. I just loved what they did with the music. And obviously diversity, upon watching the trailer, people were like, whoa, 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 black folk as royalty? Come me in. Obviously, if you're a fan of period dramas, you know that it's mostly filled with white faces. So it was nice to see a duke that is black, a queen that is black, a lady that is black. I also saw some East Asian faces, Southeast Asian faces. It was just lovely. It was a lovely melting pot. Now onto the meat and potatoes of the video. Diversity and how they could have done it a bit better. Now, obviously I'm watching these shows through the lens of being a black woman, so my opinion may differ to yours. And if it does, leave a comment. And if you agree with what I say, leave a comment as well. The algorithm loves it. The Duke is black. The Duke's best friend is black. Marina is black. Lady Danbury is black. The Queen is black but if you were of my complexion and darker you were probably watching the show being like ah they did it again they cast all the black roles as biracial or light-skinned black people which in itself isn't bad if you've got the talent and if the casting director and the director love your performance they will hire you but this trope of casting lighter skinned or biracial actors to play black characters is kind of harmful just because it erases the idea that darker skinned black women are desirable, have narratives other than being a maid, a mammy, a Jezebel, you know? So I was just like, ah, they did it again. I think Hollywood also does this because they are the palatable black. They are, you know, white passing black. <laughs> so I think with a show like Bridgerton, it was just I don't know, I guess the obvious choice. On to the black woman of the show. Oh my days. If you've watched the show, you know Marina's character. She comes into the Featherington household and she's just the belle of the ball. She's gorgeous. The the sisters are feeling uncomfortable because it's their marriage season. Now they're going to be like outshined by Marina. If you've watched the show, you know what happens. She ends up pregnant and we know who the baby daddy is, but he's not present. He's off fighting in a war somewhere. 
And when I was watching this plot unfold, I just thought, of course it was this gorgeous black girl who had to be the fast one, the pregnant one, and the one that had to get married off as soon as possible because she's pregnant and she was about to show. So they were trying to sell her off to any, and I mean, any man. <laughs> it just made me uncomfortable watching her like, be thrown off to these like eight year old crusty toothless white men and i was just like wow this kind of triggers my fight or flight bitch what and don't take my word for it my sister had the exact same reaction with marina we talked about bridgerton and the first thing she said was well of course marina had to be the pregnant one so <laughs> we were all on the same wavelength when we saw that unfold now on to Lady Danbury. I absolutely adored Lady Danbury's character. Loved her to bits. But like a lot of darker skinned black women in media and TV, they seem to be older, always in their 40s or 50s, always the wise sage, you know, the wise mystical being, the wise person who helps the main character. That was Lady Danbury for me. She was pretty much babying the Duke, and I just don't know how I felt about that. And she also didn't have any romantic prospects. You just, we just didn't get a background story about Lady Danbury. It just, it was all erased. That's why I say it's just sad. Like, black women at her age and at my age just want narratives that are normal. <laughs> we just want romance we want coming of age movies we want superhero movies always seen as the mammy the wise sage the aggressor the jezebel it's just it's so overdone and we are over it another point on diversity so the showrunner chris van dusen made an intentional point to include some sort of race relations between the black and white people and i'm assuming people of color in the show um there's this scene where lady danbury pulls the duke aside and was like you know we're in this position because the queen married the king and they brought our races together and i was just like oh so okay after that scene they just didn't mention the race relations ever again which i thought was kind of odd i mean if you were going to introduce it elaborate on it see where it goes but i honestly thought it was a bit unnecessary just because i was going into it thinking it was going to be complete colorblind casting where everyone's different races and everyone's on equal playing field and they just so happen to look different that like i thought that's what i was getting just try to think of the 90s cinderella story with brandy and whoopi goldberg um like that yeah the prince was filipino um the prince's mom was whoopi goldberg i'm pretty sure and then the king was white it made absolutely no sense but the movie was dear to my heart anyway i mean even looking at the bridgerton siblings if you're going to push for diversity go for it make some of the bridgerton siblings different races make some of the featherington siblings different races it wouldn't be this awkward like oh black people were mistreated in the past and we are we are only able to achieve this level of success of royalty because our queen married the white king ah! a recent example of colorblind casting the most recent one i can think of is mr malcolm's list now i don't know if they're making the full movie but i've watched the 10 minute snippet film trailer thing that they released and i loved it i absolutely loved it because the main characters were just completely different racially and i didn't care like i just i love to see it and i don't think there's going to be an implication or an idea that they had to suffer to get to their position to you know to be dukes and duchesses and all of that it's really wonderful check it out um Gemma chan is in it frida pinto was in it for a bit it was just lovely to see like that's what i thought bridgerton was going to be <laughs> to end this video i think bridgerton was a really fun show i loved it i'm very excited for season two so don't think i was just hating i just wanted to analyze it because i analyze all media that i consume to be honest i love finding easter eggs i love breaking things down and putting them back together so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you have comments if you have opinions let me know in the comments like this video share this video and 
let me know if you want me to watch other movies tv shows and talk about them because i really enjoy doing that thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video goodbye or should i say adieu